So as an example of these reenactments, we could look to uh, John Donaldson, who's a retired pharmacology professor who in 1990 started a canoe trip across Canada. And over the next three years, he paddled uh, through the summer months, starting in Montreal and following the old voyageur route. And his goal was to follow um, Alexander Mackenzie's path from the rapids at Lachine, just west of Montreal, um, to the Pacific Ocean in Bella Coola, where um, Mac Alexander Mackenzie finished and, and inscribed his name on the rock, and arriving there just in time for the bicentennial celebration of Mackenzie's arrival at the coast. As well as being an amusing way to pass his retirement days, Donaldson argued that there was a much larger purpose to his trip. Today, he writes, I am puzzled and disappointed that many Canadians uh, are unaware of the hardship, ingenuity, and perseverance of the brave pioneers who opened up this wonderful country. By remembering our past, we re regain our spirit and enthusiasm for the future. Sadly, he continues, Canadians show little interest in this country's history. The banal, uh, the banal celebration of our annual Heritage Day is designed to offend no one and consequently fails to reflect what or whose heritage we celebrate. The inability to step forward with pride for what we truly represent as Canadians is our major problem. It is an ominous legacy for the future when our younger generation hasn't the faintest idea of what Canada stands for. So for Donaldson, the canoe and the connection it provides to history and nature uh, gives opportunity to show the younger generation the importance of Canadian history as a foundation for Canadian identity. And today I want to examine the connection between history and recreation embodied by Donaldson's cross-country canoe trip and others like it. Donaldson was not the first to travel in a canoe to connect with Canadian history, nor was he the last. Uh, often these trips take a uh, historical figure as their focus, so like Donaldson, Alec Ross uh, paddling, uh, and Alec Ross, uh, Max Finkelstein, a group of students from Lakehead University, um, all follow Alexander Mackenzie's route at different times and in different ways, uh, from Montreal to Bella Coola. Ian and Sally Wilson follow Alexander Henry's route from Thunder Bay to Cumberland House, and during recent summers, a group of over 160 paddlers have been retracing David Thompson's route through the continent, again, a sort of centennial by centennial celebration of these things. Um, and, they, and they continue and they're much smaller versions of these as well. And this is just a sort of partial list. Other historical trip, trips take the theme of the period of the voyager, voyageurs themselves as their, as their focus. So there was the 1967 centennial canoe pageant that does this. Uh, or uh, Joni and Gary McGuffin take a honeymoon trip across Canada um, following voyager paddling traditions. And so the logistics of these trips uh, and the distances and routes paddled uh, and routes paddled vary. For these travelers, it is the canoe that provides an important connection to history mediated through the landscape. And as I'm going to show, it's the possibility of being in the same place, doing the same thing that connects these paddlers to their historical antecedents. So my argument in, in thinking about this is that these experiences of history memorialize the fur trade and the canoe trips that were central uh, to the fur trade as a founding part of the nation not because of the social, economic, and political relationships that were created and subsequently destroyed, um, but because these trips and this mode of ac economic activity and settlement provided a clear connection to the land that was to become Canada. At the heart of these trips is a belief that Canada exists in the landscape, not through the relationships of power that occur within the landscape. Thus, intimacy with the land is a central trope uh, within the narratives that emerge from these trips, one which overrides the social landscape of both past and present. To set the stage for this argument, I'm going to take a little turn uh, to look at Homi Baba's theory of national narration. Uh, and from there, I want to show how the canoe itself has become produced as a vehicle of the nation, specifically one that is supposed to connect us both to history and nature. And with that foundation, I return to the nar narratives of the historical reenactments and make some conclusions about their articulations of history and the use of suffering to try to get us in connection with our past. So in the classic sense, uh, nations are an assemblage of people with a common history and a common culture that draw upon a sort of same connection to territory. Yet Homi Baba shows that the production uh, of these nations does not actually draw from that simple recollection of historical sequence and connection to territory, but rather comes about through a narrative use of cultural identification and discursive address. These statements of the nation situate a present nation over and above the diversity of the historical record. That is, there's a nation that exists even if all the stories we tell about history don't always fall in line with how we understand that nation. 
These stories of the nation are selective and oftentimes erroneous. These narratives, however, distorted from the actual experience, attempt to establish a broad unity uh, to the broad geographic region of the nation. Indeed, in Canada, the theme of the unity in the myths of the nation is extremely strong. And unity in these cases is created in part through the narration of a story of the nation that at once historicizes the people as a group with a shared history and yet essentializes the bond, in our case, Canada, as a timeless entity. Now this process, as we all know, is, is not smooth. The production of a nation is nothing if not contested. And for Baba, the act of narrating the nation in fact comes about through the ambivalent relation between two temporal spheres of national experience. The first is the pedagogical production of the history of the nation, where the origin of the nation is presented in the linear form that provides a horizontal view of the nation embodied in the Museum of State so that you can look back and kind of see the stepping stones of the nation back to an originary event. Looking backward on history, the pedagogical nation attempts to create an identity that harkens back to an originary event. This pedagogical nation is related to Benedict Anderson's nation-building triad of museum, map, and census, and is an interpolation of subjects into national space. It sort of brings people into the story of the nation by sort of trying to tie them together in a particular story. And these narratives of the nation are intertwined with everyday uh, behaviors such that the quote-unquote people of the nation experience the nation in many different aspects of their everyday lives. And these are what Baba calls the telling details that emerge as me uh, metaphors of national life. Uh, so, you, of course, in St. Catharines, I'm sure you've been bombarded uh, over the past two years of memorializations of the War of 1812. Uh, and here's uh, one from Barry, uh, of where, yes, they find themselves in a canoe. Baba's investigation of national narratives, however, is drawn from Jacques Derrida's theory of signification, in which the meaning of a story is always infused with a supplement, such that the telling details can never actually be the whole story. Thus, the little acts ref uh, infused into our lives, such as enjoying particular national cuisines or cheering for Olympic teams or paddling a canoe, um, may carry with them um, metaphorical nationhood. But that metaphor is always negotiated through the specificity of the performance. That is, it matters where you're eating your national food. It matters what kinds of cheering you're do doing at the Olympics, who you're cheering for and why. Um, and in fact, it matters where you're canoeing and how. And so the location of one's performance inflects the articulation of the metaphor of the nation. So for Baba, like Derrida, the supplemental information is not merely extra, but is slightly anxious, as it disrupts the smooth linear history of the nation that provides a historical justification for the state. Baba argues, the nation's totality is confronted with and crossed by a, supple a supplementary movement of writing. This confrontation between the more official pedagogical horizontal linear uh, narrative of the state and the plethora of localized experiences of the state and of the nation allow for many minority discourses to slip into the narrative and continue to disrupt the nation's homogeneous story. These localized experiences are the performative narrative, Baba's second temporal sphere that impairs the pedagogical and inserts an uncertainty and ambivalence into the articulation of the nation. The writing of the nation then takes place through the production of this ambivalence and demands a constant repetition. Indeed, this constant repetition is the mantra of the pedagogical narrative, where the scraps, uh, to, to quote uh, Baba, the scraps, patches, and rags of daily life must be repeatedly turned into signs of a national culture, while the very act of the narrative performance interpolates a growing circle of narrative subjects, right? So here we have the pedagogical sort of formal story that teaches us what the nation is and really brings history in line with what we want to see in, in terms of our national identity. And then you have the performative sphere, which is where we all interact with national history, which, where we all interact with national experience in a way that doesn't always fit that, that line, right? And, and, and so it allows for Baba in many ways the kinds of difference of our experiences to come into that pedagogical narrative. But of course, na nations don't always deal easily with difference. And so the pedagogical uh, is kind of threatened by these performative experiences. And what he wants us to see is that, in fact, when we think about nationalism and when we think about national identity, it's always a dynamic between this two kind of 
differences, right? One of a sort of universal na nation that is over and above us all, and then the actual particular performances of it. And um, in this way, uh, the kind of um, history of a nation is always in the success of the pedagogical to kind of either um, override or sublimate those differences, to try to either write them out of history or to infuse them within the history that it wants to tell. 